Good afternoon, forecaster Zach Briscoe here at the Hazardous Weather Prediction Center, taking a look at the models again once this afternoon for the storm this weekend and then a potential major storm next week. Start off with the GFS. Now, this is the GFS for, we're going to start out with the weekend storm. We have a piece of shortwave energy here for it that heads up into the Great Lakes. Here's the low associated with it. A50 line is well to the north, so only parts in the upper Midwest here will get some pretty significant snow from that. But then as we head on in time, the low continues to move northeast. And it weakens, it brings some light snow to parts of the northeast here. Except there could be some freezing rain or freezing drizzle down here or just some light rain on the GFS. And then, since that storm is so weak, it doesn't really set up a block or drag in any cold air for the second storm. And here comes the second storm on the GFS. I have a piece of energy digging in here. Here is that first storm. Not much of a block going on here. And you got some kind of we got the Great Lakes low. So a fifty line is up at north. Warm air. Storm moving up. And then here it comes. Boom. Storm right over Maryland. Not a very favorable trough setup there, especially with the Great Lakes low. A fifty line way back in here. So a lot of rain going on. Snow would only be be most likely up in the interior northeast here on the GFS. Now let's take a look at the Euro motto. Things are a little bit different. Let's drag it in here. Now for our first storm it's also got that piece of short wave energy moving up. Here's your low. 850 line to the north. Not much difference there between GFS and the Euro. But things start to change as it goes down the road. Next hour, we have a little bit different trough set up here for the second storm. First storm starting to weaken move across, could produce some like freezing rain, freezing drizzle in here. But what happens is there's kind of like a three-way setup. This little weak piece goes in north. This actually here is a separate piece from our next week's storm, which is up in this region. So let's continue it. Get a 120. We have a little weak storm out here in the Ohio Valley associated with this other piece of energy but here comes the big piece of energy you were talking about. 850 line though is still to the north however things are about to change on the next frame. 120 and then we get a 144. Now what happens is this storm here creates a little bit of cold air that pulls down a50 line now is situated right in through here. Look, and you can see there's a much different trough setup than the GFS, which is a lot sloppier and to the north. Got a low down here in the southern states. And as we go on to the next frame, things get interesting. Cut off massive trough over here and just a massive low pressure system going off the North Carolina coast. What looks fishy to me is this 850 line as it goes way back into Ohio right there. With a cold high to the north and that strong of a low pressure system usually the 850 line should be somewhere right through maybe I-81 at this point. So that's looking a little fishy there but does correct as we go into the later frames. Um, 
and 192. Look at that. Somehow the 850 line goes from Ohio the whole way off the coast. And there's your low, heavy snow going back in through parts of central Pennsylvania, northward, and then New York. Now, I think the Euros probably too warm and too far west for the storm. It could be a little bit further west, could be a little bit further east, but what gives me the idea that it could be a little bit too far west with the storm is its ensemble members. There's 51 of them, and the average mean usually is better than just one run of the operational. And here is what that shows. This is from WSI. And look what we have here. Here's your low pressure system. It's further off the coast than the operational. And your 850 line is right through here. Your 540 line through here. So that would suggest that you're going to be seeing heavy snow up through northwest Maryland, south central PA, so like most of Pennsylvania actually except for Southeast PA up in New York down into West Virginia but this is still 168 hours out and it's for a week away so we still have plenty of time to keep an eye on this thing the first storm is what's going to be the major key factor in how the second storm is going to set up if you want a better chance for snow from the second storm and you want the first storm to be stronger, unlike the GFS. You want that first storm, instead of being this weak low here, you want a strong low off the coast so you get some blocking right up in here, which will allow that shortwave feature to roll up and then kind of head more outward than coming in to the coast. We'll continue to watch these models for you and bring you daily updates. Have a great day, everybody. I'm Forecaster Zach Briscoe.